that it's going to be Biden or Trump. Yeah. Somebody's going to lose come November. Yes. Somebody's side is losing. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. My predecessor, a former Republican president, tells Putin, quote, do whatever the hell you want. I will not bow down. If the Christian church survived Nero, it can survive Joe Biden. Yeah. It can survive Donald Trump. That's right. And, and at the election come this November, there will be people, even people who call themselves Christians, who will walk around as though all hope is lost because they put their hope in man. Yeah. Not yeah. in God. Bam, how are you this morning, brother? Hey, heart good, bud. It's good to be here again. Man, I love I love jumping on the show with you. Yeah. And uh, talking life, talking manhood, talking masculinity, talking faith. Yeah. And what we're going to talk about today, man, really is, um, I know it's been heavy on my mind mm. just the last couple of months, and it's probably only going to grow in heaviness as we get deeper and deeper into this political season. Mm. I don't know you know, what it is, but but every four years, people start oh. to lose their mind. Bro. Oh, man. I used to be excited because every four years, you had the Olympics, That's and right. we get fired up, and now every four years, I don't even think about the Olympics. I'm just like, here comes another election cycle. It, we are going to lose our minds. Everybody yeah. gets so mad, so divided, Yeah, and we're already seeing it, right? We're not even to the summer yet. We're already seeing it. No, it's, it's, it's happening earlier and earlier, mm. and it's getting more and more intense. Yeah. It's getting more and more divisive, right? So we're going to talk about everybody's favorite subject today. We're going to talk about politics. <laughs> yeah, they, they always say the two things you're not supposed to talk about are politics and religion, and we do both hey, all the time. we're hitting them right now. Yeah. So if you were ever about to be offended, this is it. <laughs> so but strap we'll offend in. everybody equally. <laughs> That's right. That's the go. We're, we're equal opportunity <laughs> offenders right. today. Uh, no matter no. who you vote for, you'll probably be mad. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. But the and, 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 and here's the reality, right? God is in control. Amen. So Come we're going to start with that. Yeah. God is sovereign over all things, right? And he's also providential. So often we we take God's sovereignty and God's providence and and we can confuse those things. Hmm. So so just a real quick theological primer for our listeners. That's good. Um, God's providence basically means that he provides. Hmm. Um, and literally the word means he provides beforehand, mm -hmm. meaning God knows what you need always, all the time. Before you do. Before you even do. Yeah. Um, uh, he knows what you need. So God is providential in that. And God's sovereignty simply means that if God wants it to come to pass, there's nothing we can do about it. That's right. Like it's going to happen. That's good. And, and we serve a providential, sovereign God, mm -hmm. which means in the election cycle, yeah. no matter who gets elected, God's will will be done. Yeah, no, nothing's surprising him. Nothing's upsetting his right. plan, his will. And so many have said it well, but I, I think it's, you know, it's almost become cliche, but I like the truth in it where people have said no matter who is president, God is still king. No matter who's in the White House, he's still on his throne. You know, we right. hear these cliches every four years, but there's truth there. There's a lot of truth there, man. We're not, if Joe Biden gets reelected, God's not setting up in heaven thinking, oh, man, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, what do I do now? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Plan B. <laughs> Let's figure this Throw out. Throw the whole thing out. <laughs> Start like, over. Yeah, like that's not, that's not how God operates. But we're seeing that right now in the church, you know, and we saw it four years ago when, you know, Trump was elected. We saw it before that when Obama, so no matter who's elected, half the nation's mad, yeah. half the nation's discouraged. E even a lot of the Christians, no matter who's elected, are frustrated. And, and what we see is the church, even now, walking around just with their heads down, kicking the sand. We, we just look so defeated. We do. You know, we talk about the war over here and the war over there and the economy and this law got passed and this law didn't get passed and all the sin and brokenness in our world. We, we get it, but it leads us to just complete despair. Yeah. You know, we've gotten so far away from Paul saying things like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're beat down, but we're not destroyed. Come on. You know, like, yeah, there's some persecution, but I haven't lost all hope. That's and right. Every four years, it seems like half the country loses all hope. Yeah, yeah, and we're 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 called to be the most hopeful people ever, yes, because we know how the story ends. Yeah, like mm. like that gives us the ultimate hope. I remember reading Victor Frankel's book, uh, "Man's Search for Meaning," mm. and Frankel was a doctor in a concentration camp during the Holocaust, mm. 
and they they interviewed all these Holocaust survivors, and and they said basically, what's the difference between those who made it and those who didn't make it? And Frankel's answer was it was so profound but so simple. He said he said those who made it could see beyond the horizon. Mm. Those who made it had hope. Yeah, they they imagine that there is something better coming. There That's is it. light at the end of all of this darkness. That's it. And these, you know, these are not our best days now. There's a there's a famous Christian author in Houston. I won't say his name, but he wrote a book called My My Best Life Now, Your Best Life Now. I've yes. been kicked out of two Barnes and Nobles putting gospel tracks in those books. Really. <laughs> Leave because those books alone. We don't need I no know, gospel I in that. Know, I know. <laughs> so, like, like this is not our best life now. Like, our best life is to come. Come on. And 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 here's the reality: if the Christian church survived Nero, mm. it can survive Joe Biden. Yeah. It can survive Donald Trump. Yes. It can. It can survive Hitler. It can survive Stalin. It did. Yes. Well, right, right. even in the history of our nation, our church has walked through what. A dozen different wars, Great Depression, yes. World Wars, slavery. I mean, we have walked through some of the darkest days, and the church is still here. Yeah, and and more so, the name of Jesus is abounding. Yes, more and more, more and more. It continues to go. So, so Christianity is not going to end. The church is not going to fail mm -hmm. because of a politician, because of an elected official. No, right? I mean we have. We, we we're talking about this. We have our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world being persecuted for the faith. We have Christian yeah. brothers and sisters of Christ who this week will be persecuted for the faith, imprisoned for the faith. There will be believers this week killed for their faith, and they seem to have greater hope and greater joy than a lot of Christians in our nation. With, with all the freedoms we have to meet and together and to worship and to write and encourage and talk about Jesus as boldly as we want, uh, and, and we're seeing some persecution mm -hmm. coming. We're, we're seeing that amped up. But why, why is it that when that happens, when we see that sin and darkness, we lose our light, we lose our hope, we lose our joy? Yeah, yeah. when in reality it should just strengthen us. Yes. It, should, it should spur us on to greater works. You know, we've got to stop acting like Christianity is hereditary. Mm. We, 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 we've got to remember that God always keeps a remnant. And more times than not, that remnant comes from the unlikeliest of places, mm. right? The next Mother Teresa is probably at an abortion clinic right now mm. Mm. waiting to be rescued yeah. or may do something that she's going to regret for the rest of her life. I don't know. The next Billy Graham is probably drunk in a frat house right now. The, mm. the person that cuts you off in traffic tomorrow with the coexist bumper sticker, which is just yeah. dumb, Yeah, that may be the person that... that disciples your grandchildren you Come don't on. know like god is yes. god is always working and more times than not he's working in the most unlikeliest of places mm. yeah and he's still saving people come on he's still redeeming mm. today in our nation people will be saved That's and there right. will be life transformation like you're talking about people who right now are so far gone so That's far it. from the lord he's about to bring them home yeah. he's about to bring them that's back. it man and i read this somewhere it's one of the most powerful things I've, I've ever read i don't know where i read it i forgot where i read it but it has stuck with me and and somebody once said that we forget that the apostle paul walked into heaven to the applause of people he murdered oh man that hits think about that come on the apostle paul walked into heaven oh to the celebration and the applause of people he persecuted <sighs> Yeah, how many times was he sitting in a little house church and Priscilla and Aquila is home and looked around the living room saying, I put you in prison. I killed your husband. I put your children in prison. And yet there was grace for the chief of sinners. See, there was bro. a life transformation. And, and that's, I think, the challenge is a lot of times we either forget that the Lord is saving and redeeming. So we look at the darkness, we look at the sin in our nation, and we say there's nothing that can be done, right? Yeah. Like this is too much for even God to, to revive. And that's just a lie from the mm. enemy. You know, God is moving and he is able and nothing is impossible for him. And, and then the, on the other side, I think a lot of times the other reaction we have is a Jonah like reaction to our sinful culture. You know, Jonah, when he was called to go to Nineveh, the reason he didn't want to go is because he hated the people in Nineveh. They were so wicked, so sinful that he honestly wanted them just to perish. He wanted them to be punished for all of their sin and wickedness. Yeah. And he said the reason he didn't go is he knew if I go and I call them to repentance, they might repent. And if they do repent, God will show mercy and 
I'm fine with me getting mercy. That's right. But I do not want them to get mercy. <laughs> and on. I talk to Christians sometimes, and they'll talk about the other political party. You know, they vote this way, and they talk about that. So if they're Republicans, they'll talk about the Democrats. If they're Democrat, they'll talk about the Republicans as that is like their sworn enemy. Yeah. They can do nothing right. They do everything wrong, and they don't even. They're not even hoping that God would save them. In fact, they would almost be offended if we said, hey, guess what? That guy that you hate politically, mm. he just became a Christian. Hallelujah. I, I don't word, even know if bro. they would rejoice. Come on. Like man. Jonah, they would sit there and sulk and say, well, he shouldn't get the grace and mercy that yeah. I've gotten. Yeah. And so we either have lost hope a lot of times that the Lord can revive this nation, bring light to darkness, or we've lost the desire to even see it. That's real. And if bro. we don't desire to see it, I guarantee you we're not praying for it. That's right. If we're not praying for it, it's not happening. It's not happening. Right. But All that's right. Uh, just one of many, you know, unbiblical ways to respond to everything that's going on. Yeah, dude. Everybody, everybody wants justice until they're sitting in the seat that needs mercy. <laughs> that's good. And that's it good. changes real quick. Yeah, I'm fine with me getting mercy. I want you to get justice. Yeah, <laughs> you know? 100%. It, it, and, and it's just that short memory, forgetting that we were the chief of sinners. We were the ones that far gone. And the Lord saved us. And a lot of times when I'm talking to even pastors and church leaders, but especially a lot of just Christians in our nation, you know, they'll, they'll look at the culture around us. And, yes, they lose hope. But there's also a lot of times their response is either to condemn the world, mm. condemn the nation, condemn the other political party, or to just sit around criticizing it, complaining about it, yeah. right? It, which is completely unhelpful. Like, yeah. no one's ever going to say, you know, all of your critiques on Twitter, all the criticism <laughs> you throw out on social media, the way that you just tear down the other side. It of was the, so helpful. It was so helpful. Your right? Facebook <laughs> ranting is so helpful in yeah. my life. Thank you. Yes. Please, more of that. It made more me want to know ranting. you're Jesus, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I got to know this guy's Jesus. Look yeah. how mad he is. Look right? out. Look how angry he is on Twitter. And we are. It's not even so Twitter anymore. What's it called? Angry X. It's X. X. For now. We'll see. By the time this just comes think out. how negative that is. Another Name. Like like literally the name of the platform is a is a negative symbol. Yeah, X. <laughs> X down. Hey, you buy it, you can name whatever you want, yes. I guess. <laughs> so says well, Elon Musk. I remember Elon Musk when he named his child. Yeah. It had symbols and numbers and letters. So once he bought a Bro, company, I we shouldn't be surprised. So I just so I've been I've been checking out his his kind of autobiography, hmm. right? Which he's not even he's not even old enough yet to write one, but whatever. <laughs> he has eleven kids. He what? he believes in like repopulating the earth like through mm. through child rearing. Mm. So my my man has eleven kids. I had no idea. Now I think it's from like seven different women, which is a whole nother mm. show. Like like Elon, you got pulled back, bro. But <laughs> but eleven kids. Wrong. Hey, catch eleven different. kids. Catch different. So you talk about you know there there's negative ways to respond. Yeah. To the chaos that that's about to ensue. Yeah. It's already happening. Oh yeah. It's only going to get worse as we get into the election mm -hmm. cycle. Somebody's going to lose come November. Yes. Somebody's side is losing. And half the nation. Uh, like, like, like will we be know mad. that. Like, and I appreciate RFK. He ain't winning. <laughs> no. Like, it is Republicans yeah. and Democrats. It's a repeat of four years ago. That's it. It's going to be Biden or Trump. Yeah. Somebody's going to lose, yeah. right? So, so what are some what are some negative ways that yeah. we're going to respond to this that we're going to see? One, obviously is acting like God's not sovereign. Yes. Acting like God's not providential. Acting like because this man got elected president, somehow God has lost control. Yes. Right? And, That's terrible. And I equate that to, you know, that response is you're putting your hope in one of these guys. That's right. If the guy you vote for gets elected and because of that your hope is restored, your hope is renewed, then you've put your hope in the wrong thing. It's and, idolatry. And it, it's idolatry. Yeah. And if the guy you voted for doesn't get elected, and because of that your hope is crushed and you're devastated, you've put your hope in the wrong thing. There's a reason why when the economy plummets or in the 2008 recession, you hear stories of people who take their life. Yeah. Their hope was obviously in the wrong thing. That's right. And at the election come this November, there will be people, even people who call themselves Christians, who will walk around as though all hope is lost because they put their hope in man. Yeah. Not yeah. in God. So that's 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 one negative response yeah. that, that as our as our viewers are watching this, listeners listening to this, like you need to avoid that. Yeah. You need to do a hope check right now. Where's your hope? Yeah. Like do you have a 
a temporary hope or do you have a permanent hope, mm. right? Do you have a, a worldly hope or do you have a, a, a an otherworldly, you know, good. external hope, right? That's good. Another way is to is to respond in anger. Yeah, yeah. Like to bring this angry, mad, oh. just attitude to your social media accounts, to your neighbors, right? Mm-hmm. You drive by someone's house and and they've got a the yard sign of the opposing political party, and immediately you just write those people off. Yeah, I, I've had people Christians tell me they can't watch the news anymore because it's going to give them a heart attack because they get so angry watching yeah. it. And you know, Jesus says the thing that's going to set Christians apart. The number one marker of a Christian, the number one marker of being a disciple of Christ, the number one way that people will know you're a disciple of Jesus is love. If you love one another. Like that was number one. The number one greatest commandment, love God. The greatest commandment, love your neighbor. Like Christians are to be characterized, defined, and known by our love. And when it comes to politics, we're known by our hate. And our anger. And what we're against. And what we're against. Yeah, we're not known for being for godly things, for uh, character. We're not known for pointing lost people to Christ, crying out in the streets, repent, Jesus loves you. We're just angry and mad and hateful. Yeah, we forget. We forget that Jesus was both a lion and a lamb. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about that, right? He... He was a Jesus was a man of strong convictions. Mm. I mean, he stood, Jesus stood on the word of God like no one oh, yeah. before him or after him. There was nobody before him. He mm-hmm. the, no one after him has stood on the word of God like he has stood on the word of God. He is the most uh conservative, uh conviction. Oh, yeah. I mean, he has it all, right? Yeah, he stood in front of the leaders of his day That's right. with zero fear, zero apology. Claiming truth. That's it. But on the other hand, he was also the most compassionate, most yes. liberal, <laughs> eating with sinners. Oh man, um, um, entertaining you know ladies of the night, right? To 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 talk to them yeah, and to pointing and them to, to Jesus, them, pointing them to himself to, to God. So so he was both a lion and a lamb, mm. right? And so often we want to divorce that. Mm. Like I meet I meet professing Christians. I go to churches. I you know I I preach in churches where I know. Um, these are ultra conservative. This is what we're against, yeah. right? And it's kind of cold. Um, it's dead. It's 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 super orthodoxical, right? Mm. No one. Uh, they probably haven't baptized anybody in years, right? Mm. Nobody wants to be a part of them, yeah. Because it's just it's just a cold spirit, right? Yeah. But I've also been in churches. I've pastored a church where it was just all compassion. Mm. Uh, God is a God of love, and we're a people of love, and and, and it was super attractional, but nobody knew what you believed because you really didn't stand for anything, right? We're saying today both of those are wrong. Yeah, the two extremes, right? Like Paul says in Ephesians 4, speak the truth in love. That's it. And most of us gravitate to one extreme or the other. That's right. So if we gravitate to maybe the truth, you know, one author said truth without love leads to legalism. Come on. But love without truth leads to lawlessness. Let's and go. those are those two extremes, right? We'll, we'll say, and in our culture right now, we are told to love someone means to never correct them, never That's stand right. for truth, never disagree That's with right. them. You have to support and affirm every decision they make, right? And as parents even, every parent in this nation knows that's not how you love your kids, right? Like letting your kids do whatever they want, that's not love. That's right. If your kid wants to run into the street, it's loving to just let them? No, no. come on. So we understand that there's got to be this balance of truth and love. And if the church during the election year could boldly and unapologetically with great conviction speak godly biblical truth and do it with the greatest love and compassion that we've ever seen, I believe God would use that right there, that kind of rhetoric, that kind of discourse to bring revival to a lot of these cold hearts right now. Come on, man. I I teach my kids something um, very, very early on in life. I always tell them, um, mean what you say mm. and say what you mean, Come on. but don't be mean when you say it. Oh, that's good. I love that. Mean what you say, say what you mean, but don't you ever be mean when you say that's it, good. right? That's good. And, and bro, I'm convinced that in the, next, in the next four years, the chief domestic product mm. that needs to come from the church, the chief domestic good that needs to be produced by Christians, if we want to be heard, if we want to have influence, if we want to have sway 
on this dark and broken culture, man, it's going to be kindness. Mm, it's going to be it's going to be what you said, responding in truth with love. We've got to be a people marked by kindness. If 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 the negative approach to this election season, this election cycle is going to be doubting God's sovereignty and if it's going to be hopelessness and anger and disappointment, mm. then the positive side of that, like how we should approach has to be in truth and love mm. and be a people marked by kindness, man. Yeah, export some kindness into this dark world. I mean, that's, that's the thing is Christians were never meant to sit around just complaining about the darkness. We know the world's dark. We know it's sinful. We know it's fallen yeah. because we used to walk in it, right? right? Paul says that we used to walk in that darkness, <laughs> and we were rescued. It was that Peter says we were brought into this marvelous light. Our response to the darkness, to the injustices of our culture, is not to complain about it, not to lose hope, not to be angry, but is to bring light into it. Come on. And to, we've talked so much on, on this show uh, about discipling our kids and, and this idea that we are to shepherd and sin, and we disciple them, and we send them out as light. And, I, and I'll tell you right now, kids sitting at home who every night hear their dad watching the news and just going off in anger, yelling and cussing and screaming about some other political group, they're not being taught how to bring light to the darkness. They're not being taught how to have a biblical worldview in the midst of all the lies around them, and they're not going to be the ones sent out to say, hey, I still love you, I'm going to bring kindness, but I'm yeah. also going to bring truth. Because yeah. they're not being discipled that way by their parents. Uh, you know, one example is Timothy. When Paul wrote Timothy, you're talking about Nero and these emperors of the Roman Empire, you know, Paul and Timothy lived in one of the most godless cultures in history. In history. The Romans, the Greeks, they, they had every sin imaginable. Yeah. There's not a sin we could have. Front, like out celebrated. Front. They were proud of it too, right? <laughs> That's right. I mean, there's not a sin in our culture that they didn't have there. And, yeah. uh, you know, they had no value of babies and children and life or women. They had sex trafficking and slavery and Every sin to the imaginable. nth degree. Yes. Yeah. And Timothy lived in that culture. And when Paul wrote Timothy, I believe it's in 2 Timothy 3, he brings this up. He tells him, You're surrounded by evil yeah. and imposters and deceivers and deceit, right? We, we, we have all these lies, the fake news and everything. We don't even know what to believe. And he says, You got that. And here's what Paul said He didn't say, All hope is lost. He didn't say, man, you should be angry. He didn't say you should yell at him, criticize him, critique him. Yeah. He didn't say you should have a Jonah-like response where you write them off. You know, we live in a cancel culture. He didn't say, Timothy, just cancel the cancel culture. He said, as for you, continue in what you were taught since childhood. Come on. And, and so because Timothy in chapter 1 had been discipled by his mother and grandmother, they had brought the word of God into the home, and they had sown those seeds and pressed the word of God on his heart like impressing your hand and wet cement. As an adult now, Paul's able to say, in the midst of all this darkness, yeah. you could be light. In the midst of all this cultural current trying to pull you downstream, you're going to have an anchor in the faith standing firm against the cultural currents, and you're just going to continue running the race, continue what you've been taught, and, and he's going to be able to bring kindness and truth and love and be a difference maker Come in that on. godless culture. Bro, that'll preach right there. Come on, we're going to take up an offering at the end of the show. <laughs> That's a sermon, bro. That is so good. Yeah, and, and that's the call to us. Imagine if we had a generation of parents who, as they watched the news, they muted it, they looked at their kids, and they said, let's talk about this. Yeah. He, here's the darkness we see, but, but here's the hope we have in Christ. Because God's still in control. Here's the way you can Bro, be do, light to that. Do, do you know how many Christians I hear, they quote that verse, you know, I'm not of the world. Yeah, we're not in the world. But I'm... I'm in the world, but not of right, it. Right, right, but, but I'm in the world. But they say that part, they, they say I'm in the world almost negatively. Mm. Like, like it's something I just have to uh, bear and get through. Like, I think we should change how we say that. Mm. You know, hey, I'm not of the world, but I have been sent into the world. Oh, I love that. Like, like it's mission. A, that's it, right? Yeah, it's good. not, it's not, um, you know, I'm not of the world, but, but here I am, yeah, you know, stuck it's, here. A, it's another election year. Yeah, I'm just going to put my head down until Jesus comes back. No, 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 man. You're not of the world, but guess what? God has sent you into the world mm. in this moment for such a time as this mm. to be the light of the world, Come on, like to spread truth yeah. and to spread hope and to spread love. 
and to spread kindness. And you can't do that, man, if you're always angry. You can't do that if you're always sad. You can't do that if you're always bitter, yes. right? And that's not to say that you have to have this fake you know, niceness or this fake hope, but what, what you're talking about, the anchor mm. grounded in, in, in the truth of God's word, in the promise of God's word, mm. knowing that honey does mm. attract more than vinegar. Yeah, come on. Right? Operating in a kind spirit, mm. right? We're not going to win people ranting on social media. No. We're not going to, we're not going to win people by, um, um, always stating what we're against. Yeah, yes. right. We're just not going to do it. We're not going to do it by belittling people, making people feel small. We're certainly not going to do it by making people feel less than or feel like um, um, they're not equal because they disagree with us or mm. they, they differ in opinion. No, we, we're going to win people into the kingdom by speaking truth and love, by operating in kindness, right? Yeah. And I love... <laughs> The Bible says don't just love your neighbor, man. Love your enemy. Oh, yeah. Like, we haven't even talked about that. We don't have enough time on the yes. show today to talk about that. Yes. Like, we're not just supposed to show kindness and love to people who will show it in return. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. Yes. The Bible's clear on that. It's easy to love people who love you back or yeah. love you first. But, no. yeah, can you love the unloving? Can you love the unlovable? Can you love the guy yelling at you who, who would die for the things that, that you live for? Right, who who wants to live for the things that you'd be willing to die for? I mean, that much against you, love them, dude. I was I, w I was recently sitting with the family, and um, we were having dinner. So the family was going to pray for dinner, pray mm. for the meal. They were going to give thanks for the meal, and in the prayer, the kids, right, like like everybody was praying, their kids prayed for President Joe Biden. Mm. And, and I know this family, yeah. right? This family did not vote for Joe Biden. Mm. So afterwards, I just kind of pulled the dad aside. I'm like, bro, like you all pray for Joe Biden? And he said, yeah, that's our president. Come on. That's the, that's the God appoints all rulers and, and, yes. and principalities and, and, and kings. Um, God sovereignly saw fit for him to, to be the president of the United States. Yeah. So we pray for his heart. We don't, we don't agree with his policies. We don't agree sure. with his politics. As a matter of fact, we don't think he's a believer. Right. Um, um, but we're praying for his heart. Wow. That, that, that he would turn his heart to the will of God and, and do. And I'm thinking, bro, that's the approach. That's How approach. many supporters of Trump right now are praying for Joe Biden? Ooh. Maybe and, just that family. And how, that's one. <laughs> what? And how many? How many Joe Biden supporters? If Donald Trump gets elected, are yeah. you going to find yourself praying for Donald Trump? Praying for his heart? Praying What's, that he would turn to God? Christians right? are commanded biblically to pray for our leaders. And that's, that's the thing is we we've lost either hope that God could change his heart or desire for God to change his heart. It goes you know, back to that, bro. We, we, we would almost just rather them receive God's wrath and punishment. 100%. You know, But I love what you're saying about that mission of looking at our neighborhoods, our communities, our nation, and saying we were sent here. God, God even determined our times and boundaries, right? 100%. It says in the book of Acts. So God determined that you were going to be here in 2024. God determined you'd be in this nation in 2024. Have we ever question talk about providence what's god's purpose have we even concluded that god does have a purpose here's the thing if you live in a neighborhood right now and your neighbors vote differently than you most christians are more likely to move out of that neighborhood than share christ with their neighbors that's, that's they're more likely so just true. to leave the neighborhood altogether yeah. and, and find a bubble uh, of everybody who thinks just like them and say yeah. let's just run together over here instead of loving their neighbor yeah. You know, and, and like you're saying, Christians, we get zero pass when it comes to love. There's not one person you can think of where God says, yeah, except for them. I get it. You don't right. really have, you know, it's it's love God. It's love your neighbor. It's love the least of these. It's even love your enemies. That's right. Zero pass. Love, love Love's the call. That's and, what we're called. And, and in our culture right now, are you honestly telling me that's not what we need more of? People yeah. loving one another? Yeah. People loving their neighbors, I, I think that would be one of the biggest game changers in our nation is, like you said, if we exported kindness, exported truth with love. Dude, and, and somebody's listening to this right now, and they're thinking, well, they're abandoning truth. Hmm. So I want to reiterate, that's not what we're saying. No. We, I know you. Mm -hmm. you're, you're a dear friend, a good friend of mine. We're, we're probably some of the most conservative men 
yeah. you know, on the planet. Yeah. Right. I am. I am very conservative. Yeah. But I don't divorce my convictions from my compassion. Yeah. I, I remember years ago, man, I was um, I was outside of an abortion clinic. Mm. OK, so my church, it was the Tri-Cities Abortion Clinic. So it served three cities, which is the only clinic in three cities. Mm. And next to it was a literally shared a wall was a medical building. So my church bought the medical building. Wow. And we put like 3D, 4D ultra, ultrasound machines in it. Come on. We had a group of women every morning that would come lay hands on the wall and pray for the doctors and the mm. nurses in the other building, right? So we did this thing where um, as women showed up to have a, to have a procedure, have an abortion, um, we would offer a free ultrasound. Wow. Because statistics say if, if, if a woman sees the child, she's like eight times more likely to keep it. Wow. So we would just offer these free ultrasounds. That's powerful, yeah. So I'm out there one morning. And um, I'm doing this, and this woman comes up to me, and she says, you're a horrible human being. Mm. I said, what do you mean? She said, you're out here condemning these women and telling them they can't have abortions. You don't know their story. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, I'm not doing that at all. All, mm. all I'm doing is offering free ultrasounds. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I said, I don't pretend to know their story. I know there's there's probably terrible things that have happened. Mm. And I'm not t- this they she can do whatever she wants with her body. Like that's mm. not for me to decide. Yeah. I'm just I'm just presenting another option. And she said, Well, she said, What about the woman that's here today that's been raped? You know, she's been molested. Mm. And and to carry this child to term would would be a constant reminder of that pain, of that mm. hurt. And I said, Well, uh, first statistics tell us that's less than like two percent yeah. of all abortions. Right. I said, but I also serve a God who who takes who takes traumatic things like that wow. and turns them for His glory. Yeah, I serve a God who who a bunch of brothers beat up another brother, threw him in a pit to die, and then sold him into slavery, mm. and then God used him, raised that brother yes. up to save the rest of his family. Yeah, what they meant for evil, God used I mean, for good. So I I said I said I, that's the kind of God I serve, and that's she goes good. okay. She said well. Um, what about the woman that's that's here today to have an abortion? Because if she carries this child full term, her doctor has told her that her life is in jeopardy. You're mm. telling me she can't she can't have an abortion? I said, whoa, 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 you're not listening. She can do with whatever she wants with her body. Mm. I have no say over that. Yeah. But I'm here to say that that I serve a God who said, No greater love than this than lay down your life for those that you love. So I said, good. I've seen women carry full term at the expense of their own life mm. to give that child life. Yes. I said, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And she goes, um, can we can we sit down and talk? And I said, well, I thought that's what we're doing. <laughs> you mean again? <laughs> she said, she said, I'm a reporter for Politico magazine, hmm. one of the most liberal yeah. publications in the world. Come on. And she said, I'd love to, I'd love to interview you. Wow. So we went to a McDonald's. A McDonald's and had breakfast together, and she interviewed me. That's awesome. Just about about my stance on on that conservative issue and 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 right to life, and because you'd responded in a way that she probably hadn't really ever seen Christians respond. You didn't yeah. yell back at her. Did. You didn't argue with her. You, you you pointed to the gospel. You showed a better way. You brought love. You brought kindness, and, and you showed. Listen, God can take broken things and use it right. for good, and, and God gave us the ultimate example of someone who laid down his life for us. And God might call us one day to I do said, that. I asked her, I said, hey, where do you live? She said, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm. And I said, uh, do you go to church? And she said, no. She said, my husband and I don't. I said, well, I've got a really good friend. His name is John Piper. <laughs> and, uh, or best buds. Yeah, I, said, I said, we're super close. John has no idea who I am. I said, but I'm going to give you, I sent her the address to his church. That's cool. So, John, if you're watching this and you and you led someone to Christ, you you can send you can thank me. Send me a note. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I referred her. That's it, man. But that's uh, amazing, Doctor Williams. It's so good, man. As we go into this political season, man, we go in as a hopeful people. Yeah. God yes. is providential. God is sovereign. We don't need to be angry. Yes. We need to be kind. We need to love our neighbors. We need to love our enemies. Yeah. And and the Lord has put us in the world for such a time as this, uh, to be a light. Come on. To shine, man. Yeah, it's going to be a long year. It Let's is. Let's be the church. Let's be the light. And no matter who gets elected, yes. Jesus is still on the throne. He's sovereign on the throne. I love it. Come on, man. I'll see you next week, bro. All right, Art. <laughs>